Good afternoon, space flight enthusiasts. Before I launch part two of my Alien Month finale, yes, I know it's early March, but still got one more episode to release for that month, well, I'd like to catch up with Rocket Lab, the biggest and most successful space flight company that nobody ever talks about. A company that's successfully gone to orbit at least 60 times, a company that's going to be looking for life on another planet, whereas SpaceX doesn't have any immediate plans of doing that. Sure, they're going to put boots on the ground on Mars sometime in the near future, but Rocket Lab will be looking for life on Venus sooner than that. But more importantly, or perhaps a more exciting development that's come up lately for Rocket Lab is the fact that they intend to take on Starlink. They have their own satellite constellation idea for Neutron that may very well provide some strong competition for Starlink and give customers a choice in the near future. Hello again, spaceflight enthusiasts, and welcome to this very brief, angry bulletin. First of all, let's talk about Neutron and the recent developments with this rocket. As you can see, the fairing is being tested extensively right now, a 5-meter fairing capable of deploying quite a variety of different payloads, but more importantly, this is a fairing that opens up and closes, deploying the lightest weight second stage in the industry allowing this rocket to deploy a lot more payload than a rocket of its size should be able to do. Also, a lot more of this rocket is going to be recovered upon landing, with only the tiny second stage being deployed and everything else returning to Earth, or rather returning to a landing barge, all in the same piece. So in other words, you're recovering both the booster and the fairing, virtually the entire rocket rocket with only the tiny second stage being expended. Granted, not 100% reusable the way Starship is, but still way more reusable than either Falcon Heavy or Falcon 9. This rocket is going to be extremely competitive when it enters service, although I have significant doubts as to whether or not it's actually going to be entering service by the middle of 2025, maybe closer to the end of the year or perhaps even in 2026, but still it isn't important for Rocket Lab to get this rocket into operation because they are doing so incredibly well with Electron and with their other businesses. It's not just launch that puts money into Rocket Lab's coffers. As a matter of fact, nearly 70% of Rocket Lab's revenue comes from non-launch related activities. For example, Rocket Lab's Pioneer spacecraft recently delivered Varda's W-2 space capsule mission that included a hypersonic re-entry capsule carrying a spectrometer from the Air Force Research Laboratory and a heat shield with a thermal protection system developed in collaboration with NASA's Ames Research Center. The mission also carried, more importantly, an expanded bioreactor which will increase Varda's capacity for processing pharmaceuticals in orbit. You can manufacture some unique and and very effective pharmaceuticals in microgravity, and Varda specializes in this type of activity, even though the FAA refused to allow them to land their first mission, which had some very critical AIDS treatment medications on board. And finally, Varda decided to say screw the FAA, and they went and landed in Australia instead, and the W-2 mission also landed in Australia without even bothering to ask the FAA about the whole thing. Following the launch of this mission, Rocket Lab operated their spacecraft on orbit for six weeks, delivering critical mission functions for Varda's 120 kilogram capsule, including power, communications, propulsion, and attitude control. The Pioneer spacecraft was designed, built, and tested at Rocket Lab's spacecraft production complex and headquarters in Long Beach, California. So, once again, this had nothing to do with electron nothing to do with Neutron, nothing to do with rockets whatsoever, but these sorts of missions are putting a considerable amount of money in Rocket Lab's coffers. And then on top of that, they're carrying out a mission for NASA. 
Well, to be more precise, this is actually a private mission that NASA is helping out with. The first ever private mission designed to look for life on another planet, or rather, in the atmosphere of another planet, that is to say, in the clouds of Venus. NASA's role is to help the commercial space endeavor succeed by providing expertise in thermal protection of small spacecraft. Invented at Ames, NASA's Heat Shield for Extreme Entry Environment Technology technology or heat is a woven heat shield designed to protect spacecraft from temperatures of up to 4,500 degrees Fahrenheit. Keep in mind that Venus has a very dense atmosphere and this spacecraft is going to be hitting that atmosphere at a very high velocity. We're talking an incredible inferno that this spacecraft will have to survive before it can start looking for the chemical signatures of life. The probe will deploy from Rocket Lab's Photon spacecraft bus taking measurements as it descends through Venus's atmosphere. But the biggest recent news that might very well put a lot more money into Rocket Lab's coffers is the rollout of something called the Flatolite. <laughs> that is so corny, it's almost genius in how corny it is. But in any event, let's go ahead and check the press release here. Rocket Lab announced the Flatolite, a new satellite that can be produced in high volumes and tailored for large constellations. Target high-value applications and national security missions. A scalable, long-life, high-power, stackable satellite, Flatolite enables secure, low-latency, high-speed connectivity, and remote sensing capability for national security, defense, and commercial markets. Flatolite employs a low-profile, stackable structure to maximize the number of satellites that can be deployed per launch and has seamless integration with Rocket Lab's own Neutron rocket. Flatolite is the culmination of a very deliberate and strategic approach through both acquisitions and organic product development to become a uniquely vertically integrated satellite manufacturer. Flatolite integrates Rocket Lab's heritage components and subsystems, including propulsion, flight software, avionics, reaction wheels, star trackers, separation system, solar arrays, radios, composite structures, fuel tanks, and more. And here's what billionaire CEO Peter Beck had to say about it. Quote, the need for large, reliable satellite constellations continues to grow across defense and commercial markets. The industry is hungry for versatile satellites that are affordable and built fast in high volumes. This is why we created Flatolite. Flatolite is more than just a new product developed to serve our customers' ever-evolving needs. It's a bold strategic move toward completing the final step in Rocket Lab's ultimate vision of being a truly end-to-end -end space company, operating its own constellation and delivering services from space by having our own rides to space with Neutron and Electron and being able to build our own spacecraft in high volumes. We're at a distinct advantage when it comes to deploying constellations with speed and cost efficiency. Indeed, there are not very many companies that can do this, Really, only SpaceX is working on something similar. Yes, Blue Origin has their own constellation, but it's Amazon that actually owns it. So this is definitely a shot across the bow from Rocket Lab to SpaceX, putting them into an entirely different category of competitor than they were, say, last week. And given how much Rocket Lab stock has been exploding, they took a little bit of a hit last week, but overall so much stronger than they used to be it's clear that investors are taking them very seriously as well. Thank you very much for watching. I would like to thank the following incredible new Patreon supporters, Laura Wolfer and also Rob Lyons. And finally, On Orbit Studio. Thank you so much for your support. If you'd like to join these folks, all the details are in the description. And also keep in mind that between now and March 22nd, I have a whole new line of merchandise that is just rolled out. From alien merchandise to SpaceX stuff to Hohmann orbital equations for the true space flight geeks amongst you. And finally, Apophis merchandise for those who are looking forward to kissing your asteroid goodbye in 2029. Links for this new store are in the description and also at the top of the comments section. 
don't miss it because we're only looking at three weeks for this merchandise to be available. And trust me, the quality of these garments has gone way up. It is so good. And also, this is the merch company that Ellie and Space has been using for years. So if you want to support this channel, you know what to do. Thanks again for watching, and as always, stay angry about space.